did someone do black magic on me? Like, did someone, is someone giving me evil eye? Like, Besties, welcome to my channel. It's Anissa, Anissa Rose, and we are going to be talking about PCOS today. How are you? How have you been? How's everything? Hopefully you're doing well. I could not be better. Today we're going to be going over my PCOS journey and I'm kind of going to be giving a little overview of what PCOS is. And since now I'm going to be talking about PCOS pretty often on this page, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail, too much detail. This is just going to be a little overview. If you're on my IG, which I highly suggest you follow, I did a questions, a Q&A. And so I'm going to be using those questions and kind of talking about my own personal um, story and just how I found out I had PCOS. And hopefully when you're done watching this video, you have more of an understanding of what PCOS is. Maybe you have PCOS, you might know someone who has PCOS. It is very common nowadays. I believe it's one in five or one in ten women. I don't want to get the numbers messed up, but it's very common nowadays for um, PCO to have PCOS. And so it's really good to have this information available um, and then you can share it to someone who it might be able to help. And also for people to know that they're not alone in their journey. Also, I'm very barefaced today. I had to do some skincare videos. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm just, you know, all natural. Hopefully you all can get into it okay i have the questions here and i'm going to start with questions first and kind of lean into it so um what is pcos so pcos stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome people um will say it's a hormone imbalance now pcos is currently being researched heavily now um and the data is always changing so right now i would say it's a hormonal imbalance but it's honestly so much more than a hormonal imbalance so the first question was what causes pcos so this is what i'm saying research is really unknown of what actually causes pcos it is it is believed that it is a genetic thing um that you're born with but there's a lot of um environmental Things that can have an effect like stress and what you eat and how you exercise and definitely um, it also affects your for some women with PCOS it affects your insulin so that can be very tricky because the normal like eat low carb and work out more doesn't really work with that why does PCOS cause absent periods um, someone said why does PCOS cause me not to have my regular periods and it's mainly because of the hormonal imbalance factors. And what are the what are the main symptoms of PCOS? That's um, in regular periods, heritism, um, it's like facial hair, um, excess growth of hair, acne, weight gain, infertility. And also, it can honestly just make you not be able to sleep at night too, which is like, to me, is like one of the worst symptoms. What does polycystic stand for with PCOS? So, women with PCOS can sometimes get these cysts on their ovaries, and it looks like a string of pearls on ultrasounds. Um, it's just because they're not um, ovulating, and they're just kind of like pimples that kind of just stay you know but just in your ovaries and so there'll be like just like ring of um cysts like little small cysts can pcos be cured no there is no cure to pcos it can be managed someone says if you have pcos does that mean you don't have to take birth control actually no <laughs> if um you have pcos it doesn't mean that you're infertile there's tons of women that have pcos that does conceive and actually i've noticed that a lot of people with pcos um will say like oh i thought i couldn't have kids and i, I got pregnant so you never know um it's possible because you you still might ovulate um anytime and you know i'm going to talk about my infertility um next but i will say that if you want to protect yourself from getting pregnant and you do have pcos you should 
try to at least track your ovulation or do whatever you feel comfortable but pcos doesn't mean you're completely infertile okay and so those are some of the questions and if you have any questions please let me know down below and comment them because i will still be answering more questions and now i'll be talking about my own personal journey with pcos and a little bit of my infertility journey so i got diagnosed with pcos in 2018 um a little bit after i got married and it was actually my husband that noticed something was wrong um the first thing that was wrong was how i used to swell my stomach was swell um i have this picture that i remember from my bridal shower and i look just fat like i just i'm fat but it was just pure swelling like i would just swell up and um, I would get really bloated and it would be so uncomfortable. And that was like a symptom that I just, I always thought that I just had. And then my, my husband picked up one was my irregular cycles. He has a lot of sisters. And, you know, when I was telling him like, yeah, you know, like my period lasts like 40 days when I have it. Sometimes like three or four months. Honestly, like I'll just bleed like nonstop. And... He would be like, that's not normal, you know, and I never went to OGBYN before. So I had went in and they looked at me and was like, oh, you have PCOS, here's birth control. Bye bye. I never heard what PCOS was. I didn't know. Like, I don't even think I left the hospital before I started Googling it. And I just kept seeing infertility, infertility, infertility. And when me and my husband first got married, I remember I wanted have a kid as soon as possible and um and so it was devastating it was really devastating and I didn't tell anyone I remember just not knowing what to do it was like this shock and I didn't I couldn't understand and so I kept trying to find different doctors to help me everyone kept saying you're so young don't worry about having kids don't worry about this PCOS um, if you just lose weight but then I started to realize and started to find people talking about it that like okay my cycles have always been irregular I I was vegan at one point I've always ate healthy like you know I was never a girl that eats like fast food that eats out all the time like never ever in my life and I was the only sister and my siblings that was big like that, even though we were all eating the same food. And I started to really think about it like I would gain like 50 pounds every year, even if I was eating healthy, even though I, I played soft, softball, not softball, what is it? Volleyball. Um, I love to ride my bike and I was just always gaining weight. And in the first half of my journey, look, I'm already getting emotional, you guys. I'm going to freaking cry. <sighs> But um, the first half of my journey, I was just like, it was all coming to me like, oh my gosh, like, this is what's wrong with me. Like, I literally, trigger warning, you know, went through an ED, like, thinking like, oh, I'm just, I'm overeating or something. But like, no, it all made sense. Like, it was this PCOS stuff. But like, you know, my mom has eight kids. My sister had already had two children. And I'm like no this there's this can't be right and then i had my first miscarriage and it sent me it really sent me and out of my friends um like my close friends i i was the only married person and the other married girls didn't want to have kids and so it was kind of hard to like navigate talking to people um, it had a lot to do with like the fact that my family, they're not Muslim. I'm the only Muslim in my family. So there was a faith factor to this as well. That was like a disconnect because I wanted to just trust God in the process and, you know, kind of like talk to people and connect to people. But, um, I think that's why like right now as a Muslim woman, I talk about it so frequently because I didn't have anyone to talk to and people made me feel very uncomfortable and like I really just needed a hug and a prayer like I just really needed someone to be like oh like Allah like 
is going to to answer your prayers and everything's going to be okay but instead i was kind of met with we felt like a brick wall and it was so difficult for me to navigate um because i converted in 2016 you know so it was i was still pretty new to islam when i started going through all this also i have a bird on my hand sorry guys <laughs> but um uh I, it was just a lot, you know, that that first the first few years and a lot of stuff happened. And I, I'm going to talk about this in other videos of like finally finding a new doctor and getting a doctor to listen to me because that was a journey and stuff. I think I went through three or four doctors. I even had to, to take a doctor to court. Like it was a lot of stuff like medical court. It was a lot. So um, what ended up happening is we moved to um canada but before then i mean <laughs> doctors and doctors and tests and um i had two really bad miscarriages one i had to get a dnc had to have a surgery i had polyp removal i did clomid um what else happened? So much stuff happened. Of course, I went through this thing. Did someone do black magic on me? Like, did someone, is someone giving me evil eye? Like, you know, of course, I feel like that's like a natural reaction because it was just like, how it was happening was just so crazy. Like, my PCOS got worse when I got married and it was how it happened. It was just a little, even suspicious to me and my husband. We were like, it was so weird. And um, we went to the imam and he gave us these drink, this drink to drink and prayed and um, taught us the prayer that we're supposed to pray. And he was like, there's nothing, there's no black magic attached to you. There's no jinn attacking you, like you're okay. And I was like, okay, cause it does very, infertility feels very spiritual. If you've gone through it, you definitely feel like something's just not right. It doesn't feel right. And I'm, I really want to get into that because I, I now the stage that I am in, in my PCOS journey, it, I know what it is. I know the root cause of my PCOS. Um, but yeah, so then I moved to Canada and got a doctor here. And this is like right before COVID. Um, Doctor looks at me, she was a Muslim woman, a nurse, and we were at an infertility clinic, and she was like, try keto. Um, and that's when I started this channel. And if you, you know, go, I have a playlist of like my keto journey and my journey to get pregnant and you know, all supplements that I took and stuff like that. And um, that's when I started making videos and talking on, on my page. And now we have like 20K followers on TikTok, you know? And that's how this all started. But basically, like I, I ended up getting pregnant. I lost 60 pounds. I was on the keto and I did supplements and um, some African traditional things as well. And um, I worked that at home, got pregnant naturally, had my son. After I had my son, it's where I'm at right now. My son is two. We're trying for our second child. And my PCOS is completely different. I tried to go back on the keto. I tried to do everything. It's not It's not the same anymore. My body's not the same. And the doctors and the people that I have around me now are like, You're, my body basically went into starvation mode. Yeah, I lost all that weight. But I kind of um, jacked my body up with, because of the PCOS and the type of PCOS that I have. So I have to do things a little differently. So yeah, that's a little bit of my journey. Um, and right now I am navigating weight loss. I have been able to lose, you know, at least a little more than 20 pounds. And I'm maintaining my weight loss. And I, I'm in a good place with my PCOS um, when, when it comes to knowing what I need to do. But PCOS does affect your mental health. And I'm a UGC creator. I'm a businesswoman. I'm a mother before all things. And then I am a Muslim, so I'm praying five times a day. When you have PCOS, it's like your body is just fighting against you. And actually, when I talk to other people with autoimmune diseases, 
illnesses they seem like and they talk like how i feel and so like i know that they are starting to do a lot more research with pcos but it really like people with pcos are three times more likely to have depression to have anxiety um and you're also more likely to commit unaliving you, yourself like this is real this is it's a real thing it, it really affects you because you have to try every single day like today i i woke up i had to work out i have to be very mindful of what i eat and what i drink and how much sleep i'm getting like it's just a lot um so yeah that's a little bit about pcos and my journey and i just want anyone to know that if you know someone with pcos or if you have pcos you're not alone and um i have two more videos on this get to know me series so this is a big factor for me pcos is a huge part of my life it's what i want to talk about it's my platform that i you know i really want to have i am a multitude of different things and i do a lot of different things but pcos is my core in me like that is who i am and if you like this video make sure you like comment and subscribe all the support really does help um i am a small page i am so happy that i even have 300 subscribers i'm very very happy and i can't wait to that i can say 3000 <laughs> you know um inshallah and i i'm just so happy to continue to um, make these videos and yeah until next make sure you like comment and subscribe